Welcome to the Escrima Podcast. My name is Jason Enai, and I am an Enai and Escrimador. Uh, if you have, this is your first time, welcome. Uh, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Do all the things so that you can make sure you get your notifications. I do not actually uh, release on a schedule simply because I'm such a busy person uh, between uh, my regular job and then teaching martial arts 20 plus hours a week, not including seminars and things like that. So I just get out this uh, content as as a uh, as much as possible essentially and uh, if you are returning you already know on person or uh, in-person training is at www. Uh, nine nine screma dot biz and online training is www. dot nine dot com uh, you know we've been talking recently about like or the last one that I, I recorded was about now, how, how it's hard to start. Uh, you know, cause some people say, well, how did you get started? Or how do you get started? And it's actually, that's pretty difficult. The other part is, is how do we keep going? Uh, you know, how do you start and how do you keep going? And some people say, you know, you've been doing this for so long. You know, I started, my first formal class was when I was six. Uh, and... Uh, my cousins tell me stories of you know learning from my dad when I was four when he would just play with me a little bit you know and show me things and then you know as a four-year-old I try to do things right um, you know I think it's great to have you know, classes that are for five and six year olds or even four year olds if they can follow directions and things like that I think it's important for lots of different reasons uh, in terms of uh, development is concerned, right? Uh, and then, of course, my, my formal classes when I was six, you know, we hear a lot of people start their martial arts career, if they have a martial arts career, but when they start their martial arts, their parents sign them up when they're six. I think that's great, too. But then, you know, here I am, 50 years old, and I'm still doing it. And, you know, what, what, what did that take? Right. And how does someone continue to do that? You know, for me, uh, I think, you know, it's just like anything else. I think we make a mistake in the martial arts industry when we say, I'm a black belt school, or you know, we're here to be black belts, or something like that, simply because that's a goal. And once you, re once you reach that goal, what do you do next? Right? Sometimes people just pick a new goal. Most of the time, people pick a new goal. If they even reach that goal, uh, and that you know, goes into you know, martial arts industry standards when it comes to like uh, attrition rates, retention rates, and things like that, and how we retain people. But from the practitioner's standpoint, the student's standpoint, really what it comes down to uh, is you know, how I deal with plateaus and how I deal with my own determination, perseverance, discipline, dedication is you know, continuing to engage in the things that I enjoy or have a goal in general, right? Uh, something I'm striving for, you know, the next milestone, right? And, and, and that's it. it. It can't just be, I'm getting a black belt. It could be, you know, I'm gonna do this so that I can get to this level so that I can do this next thing so that I can do this next thing, you know? I often tell my students, and I've been talking recently on, on this uh, podcast, you know, when, you're doing your martial arts and you get to that black belt. Black belt isn't expert. Black belt isn't, uh, you know, mastering anything really, right? Black belt is, all right, you've got all your fundamentals down. Now you're ready to really train. You know, now you're ready to, you know, embark on the unknown, right? Where, where fights are. Fights are uncertain things and they're chancy and they're a surprise. They're not terribly convenient right and there's a lot that goes into fighting that isn't really covered in your regular forms that you might learn your, your striking combinations you know the different drills there's a lot other things that need to be considered especially if it's a street fight right so you know you're trying to get to the point where you're ready to do that training and then it's like how, how well did I do with this or how well did I do with that, right? And, and so as an example, what I mean to say is like when you're training, you have to understand like did, 
let's let's just pick the example of a cross, a, a jab cross uppercut, lead uppercut. It's a very common striking combination in hand fighting, especially if you have a boxing, kickboxing background, right? Uh, you know, you lead lead punch, rear punch, and then the lead up up punch, up, uppercut. You know. In your sparring and when you're doing things like that, how, how are you with that? Like when you do it on the on in the air, it's great. When you do it on a bag, maybe it's great. When you do it on pads, it's great. Uh, maybe you're doing it with the blockers or something like that, where they're you know you're having to slip, bob, weave, dodge, or step before you do that. What's it like when someone punches you in the face? How can you get better there? Or you know you're in the middle of your combination and you get punched or kicked. Yeah, how do you how do you modify the movement so that you first maintain your own safety and then you see to you know landing your your, your strikes right and this is just a simple example you know with Escrima it might be I, I really like the umbrella counter right uh, and then the question is does it ever come up in a fight in other words, when you're training or when you're sparring, or you're doing full contact stick fighting. Is the strike, is that defense ever surfacing? Is it ever emerging from your repertoire while you're trying to get hit? And if it does, when? Is it when they hit fast, when they hit slow? Does it come up as a surprise? Right? And then how do we address that in our training? Right? A good part of, you know, staying engaged is when you feel like you're progressing. And so you can set goals for yourself. Like I would really like to be able to do uh, a particular striking pattern or combination in my, in, in my fights. And I would like to work on them in terms of targeting or maybe it's a defense like the umbrella, like we discussed. And you know, how do I make that a, a reflex? How do I make that a response, right? And how do I utilize that in a way where <clears throat> it's something that I can rely on or use against my opponents in defense and how does that set me up for the next thing what does my combination look like after that and so you do this with different defenses like maybe it's a parry or if it's a limb destruction or maybe you know like after my my strikes i'd like to be able to enter into a takedown and after my defenses i'd like to be able to enter into a takedown and then when i enter into a takedown and it fails i'd like to immediately get to uh, this kind of step so i change my zone or you know re as soon as i you know, make a, a takedown attempt and uh, it's negated in some way that I immediately follow up with strikes or whatever it is that you do, right? A big part of, you know, seeing yourself, you know, a year from today in your training, like if you're coming to my seminars and you're seeing yourself coming to the next year's seminar, coming to in the next five year seminars and then becoming an instructor in the United training organization, if you can imagine that, right, is having these goals and understanding that it's not enough like a lot of times we get caught up in well i know this technique or i know this drill or i know this form what's the next thing with my students we work on all right so now you have this basic drill this fundamental drill number one as, as an example okay what conditions can i use this skill under when someone's kicking me when someone's punching me when am I moving forwards? When am I moving backwards? When is this behavior, this skill appropriate? When isn't it appropriate? And so we get into, instead of what's the next thing, it's like how much deeper can I understand the thing that I already know, right? And how doesn't it work? And how does it work? And how can I reinterpret it? Or how can I re-express it? Because it is martial art. And so the art part is you having a deeper understanding of something simple, like in almost every martial art, we have like an inward block, right? Uh, whether you do it with your hand closed or you do your hand open, whatever it is, right? And this motion, uh, is it an attack? Is it a defense, right? Is, is, is the process of getting deeper into the knowledge is asking those questions, the who, what, when, how, why, where, all of that in each of your movements <clears throat> under different contexts. You know, like I, I love, I love that in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu they say like, you know, one of the biggest differences between white belts and black belts 
is that black belts don't lose their breath. They're, they're never out of breath, right? So, I mean, what, what, what must I do in my training, in my fighting, full contact stick, empty hand, fighting, kickboxing, grappling or rolling, right? What must I do with my body? What must I focus on in order for me to maintain good respiration, not to not be out of breath, right? Uh, you know, there's that other saying, uh, there's no such thing as a black belt technique. There's, it's just white, all white belt techniques done at black belt level or something to that effect which implies this idea of instead of, you know, what's the next technique or drill or exercise, or having the words come out of your mouth, well, I've been training for three years and I haven't learned anything from my teacher, right? Which is a problem that needs to be addressed as well, right? But from the point of view of the student, what I always did was, it was incumbent upon me to find value in the lessons coming up as a student, right? And so that was the thing that I was working towards, right? So what do I gotta do to get to there, right? And that takes discipline and that takes, you know, you can't just take what's being taught to you, right? And um, and then just move on to the next thing. You have to dig a little deeper. It's not very different than being in the university and uh, you're, you're given your textbook and you take your classes and you do your things and you do your, but in order for you to actually do your essays, in order for you to actually, especially in university, develop a thesis, or if you're at a higher level defending your thesis, right, as a, as a doctorate student getting a doctorate, right, you have to dig deeper, right? And as instructors, you'll notice, if you have a very good instructor, is that they've dug deeper. They know the history of the art. They know maybe the history of that technique it's evolution within their organization, the way it was taught when their teacher taught it to them and the way it might have changed over times by the time that they taught it to you. And where could you take that, right? Your ability to persevere and have the discipline, uh, which, you know, is important, will be deeply hampered by you not taking a deeper interest in the art, right? You, you know, learn its history. You know, you know, if you if you're taking uh, Taekwondo, when was it founded? Who were its proponents? What were the changes that happened in the in, in the sixties, and the seventies, the eighties, and the nineties that evolved that particular art? Right? What's its precursor before it was called Taekwondo? Right? All of those things. You know, having that will give you deeper depth avenues of research. And, and you know at least help you develop a reading list right so I guess the message that I could give you you know as a student of the arts is to truly go out there and learn right uh, if you're here to collect a trophy or an accolade and simply that and you reach that and you go that's okay and that's good there's a place for everybody in, in the arts right Although, if, if you want to get to that point where, you know, of greatness that we see and we talk about, uh, about some truly great martial artists out there, you know, um, I, you know, I am regularly, regularly confronted with the experience of attending a seminar or teaching at a seminar, of interacting with others, and they'll be like, oh man, I trained with your dad back in 89 or, you know, I met your dad in, in the early 90s at a seminar in, I don't know, Tennessee or, you know, Alabama or, you know, all the different places that my father taught. And, you know, they'll have some kind of anecdote of their experience and it's, and it's usually very complimentary and things like that. And, the reason why he got to do that and the reason why he was in all those places was because he dug deeper. It wasn't just that he was a private lesson student of his teachers. It's not that I was just, you know, the son of, of the founder of my, my, my family system. It's that I dug deeper. And you can do that too, right? All you have to do is take an interest, get in there, look, don't, 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 um, 
ensconce yourself in the politics of the community, you know, learn from it. Learn from the different people, you know, use some good judgment, be willing to change your mind when you learn something new, right? Uh, that's that's important for you to be able to do. Uh, but um, anyways, keep training, keep working hard, look for new things. The things that you think are true, what we do to learn how they're not true and how we can make it better is what helps us persevere and see ourselves training not only for till next year but or even in the next five years not only since going from white belt to black belt but from black belt to you know master instructor whether that's a fifth degree black belt in your organization or a tenth degree black belt or something like that or whatever color the belt or the title is be here for life the martial arts community needs us needs you uh, to become better you know i tell my students I'm not a teacher without students. And a system or an art isn't anything without its practitioners. I'll see you on the training floor.